chapter one, what is psychology? In this chapter, we're going to learn about what psychology is and break it down. The definition approaches health and wellness, history of it, and careers. We're going to discuss the roots and early scientific foundations of psychology, summarize the main themes of the approaches, evaluate the areas of specialization and careers in psychology, and describe the connections between the mind and the body. Understanding complex behavior, such as why people engage in courageous acts, is part of what psychologists study. Not only do psychologists study extraordinary behaviors, they also study everyday experiences. Psychology is considered a science, but it is different from other sciences from which students are familiar. Psychology as a science focuses on the many facets that make people who they are. So, anyone know a psychologist? What they do, where they come from? Few people actually know a psychologist. Most students learn about psychology from the media, like movies, TVs, TV shows, and news. Until the last decade, media portrayals of psychologists have been wildly inaccurate and even derogatory at times. Think about the times you've seen psychologists played in the media. The scientific study of behavior and mental processes. Scientific study is part of psychology. The goals of psychology are to describe, predict, and explain behavior, and they're easily tied to the research methods that we will be discussing in Chapter 2. Behavior. They look at what can be observed. And mental processes. Those are your thoughts, feelings, motives, things that cannot be seen. Psychology is defined as the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. As a science, psychology uses the scientific method to observe human behavior, draw conclusions based on those observations. And behavior is everything that a person does that can be directly observed, and mental processes, as we said, internal thoughts, feelings, and motives that cannot be. So looking again at the science of psychology, it does not accept assumptions at face value and uses a structured empirical method to study human behavior. At the core of the scientific approach are four attitudes, critical thinking, skepticism, objectivity, and curiosity. Critical thinking is the process of reflecting deeply and actively, asking questions and evaluating the evidence. Psychologists are skeptical. They ask questions. What want to know what people know and apply it to everyday life to challenge assumptions. Pursuit of precise information is an additional characteristic of psychologists. They aim to have the best understanding of a topic or issue as possible. Pseudoscience is information that is presented as if it were scientific, but it's actually not. It's not supported by sound scientific research. Psychologists are objective, and they use empirical methods to evaluate events and data and individuals as they are, not as we would like them to be. And curiosity, asking questions and wondering about things, that's part of what makes psychologists scientists. So psychology covers a plethora of topics and issues. As you, most people think of psychological disorders, but if you look at this book, only two chapters are dedicated to psychological disorders. There are a lot of things outside of that that is covered by psychology. Psychology looks at all human behavior. Freud pioneered the original perceptions of what people knew about psychology. And since then, these perceptions have been mainstreamed into TV and the media. Psychology seeks to understand the truth of human life in all its dimensions, including people's best and worst experiences. 
Some psychologists argue that their field is focused too much on the negative aspects of humanity and neglected qualities that reflect the best of human life. The branch of positive psychology was a push by scholars for more emphasis on the positive and good aspects of human behavior. They wanted to focus more on what humans value, the traits associated with optimal capacities for love and work, and positive group and civic values. So there's a lot more to psychology than disorders. So looking at social media, it's a big part of our lives now. And it depends on how you use it. There's actually a study looking at the effects of social media on people's mood. And what they found is that if you're an active poster, you're always posting the things that you're doing, the places you go, all your activities, is different than those who passively scroll through looking at everything else everyone else posts about their lives. So what is, was found is that the people who are posting all the time promote more of a positive well-being. They feel better than those who are passively scrolling because it's more of the look what I don't have type syndrome and feeling sorry for yourself. So how do you use social media? Moving into the history of psychology and looking at it from a historical perspective, for thousands of years, people have been trying to answer basic questions of human behavior, such as how do our senses perceive the world? How do we learn? What is memory? Why does one person grow and flourish whereas another person struggles in life? Do dreams matter? And can people learn to be happier or more optimistic? Early philosophers such as Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle debated the nature of thought and behavior, including the possible link between the mind and the body. Later, Descartes and others argued that the mind and body were completely separate entities and focused their studies on the mind. Psychology has its roots not only in philosophy, but also in biology and physiology. William Wundt, a German philosopher and physician, founded the academic discipline of psychology. He first studied structuralism. They focused on the basic elements or structures of mental processes. And introspection was the method used to study these mental structures and relies entirely on the person's conscious reflection. Individuals were asked to think about what was occurring mentally as events were taking place. These studies focused mainly on sensation and perception because there were those were the aspects that could be broken down into components or parts. So functionalism is concerned with the functions and purposes of the mind in an individual's adaptation to the environment. Structuralists were looking inside the mind while functionalists were focused on how humans interacted with the outside world. A core question in functionalism is, why is human thought adaptive? Functionalism meshed well with other intellectual development. Charles Darwin's principle of natural selection, which considers how organisms adapt to the environment, survive, and produce offspring, was one of them. Genes associated with survival are more likely passed down from one generation to the next, and species change through random genetic mutation, which explains why members of a species are different from one another of the same members. So here are some dates for you, um, just to kind of give you a time frame of how everything played out um, for psychology, going from philosophy, biology, and physiology, and then moving for Vunt and then James, who was one of his students, and Darwin, how he played into it with evolution. and the natural selection part of looking at psychology, which will be discussed further when we look at the approaches. So here are the contemporary approaches that we're gonna be covering um, for psychology. And it's important to realize that these approaches are complementary, not necessarily contradictory, and they really represent different levels of analysis. 
You have biological, behavioral, psychodynamic, humanistic, cognitive, which is listed twice, and sociocultural. So looking at the biological approach, it emphasizes the study of the body, especially the brain and the nervous system. Neuroscience is the scientific study of the structure, function, development, genetics, and biochemistry of the nervous system. It emphasizes that the brain and nervous system are central to understanding behavior, thought, and emotion, and has spread to many other research areas, including developmental neuroscience, social neuroscience, and behavioral neuroscience science as examples. The behavioral approach also emphasizes the scientific study of observable behavior responses and their environmental determinants. John Watson and Skinner were the first behaviorists, and they dominated psychological research during the first half of the 20th century. When we move into conditioning and more of the behavioral approach, we will get into more detail on the behaviorists Pavlov, Watson, and Skinner. Looking at the psychodynamic approach, of course, that's Freud. So the notable be behaviorists that we will look into further uh, later on are Ivan Pavlov, John Watson, and B.F. Skinner. Looking at the psychodynamic approach, of course, you have Freud. The psychodynamic approach emphasizes unconscious thought, the conflict between biological instincts and society's demands, and early family experiences. Sigmund Freud was the founder of the psychodynamic approach. He believed that a person's early interactions with parents were the major factor that shaped an individual's personality. The humanistic approach emphasizes a person's positive qualities the capacity for growth and the freedom to choose any destiny. Humanistic psychologists stress that people have the ability to control their lives and avoid being manipulated by the environment. Topics such as altruism and optimism are largely studied under this approach. The cognitive approach emphasizes the mental processes involved in knowing, how we direct our attention, how we perceive, how we remember, how we think and solve problems. Other scientists who adopt this approach focus on information processing, the way the human mind interprets information, stores it, and applies it to decision making. The evolutionary approach uses evolutionary ideas such as adaptation, reproduction, and survival of the fittest as the basis for explaining specific human behaviors. Evolutionary psychologists believe that their approach provides an umbrella that unifies, unifies the diverse fields of psychology. One notable evolutionary psychologist is David Buss. And if you're interested, you can look him up on YouTube. He has several things that you can watch to, to see how uh, he uses the evolutionary approach to explain behavior and a lot about mating behavior. And this picture here is of Jane Goodall, who did um, research with um, apes, as you can see, chimpanzees, I'm sorry. Sociocultural approach emphasizes the ways in which the social and cultural environments influence behavior. With the rise of cultural diversity in the United States, research on the influence of culture on behavior has led to important findings in the role that culture plays in our sense of self. Of course, in reality, many career psychologists straddle all of the different categories that we're looking at here in terms of careers in psychology. Um, there are a variety of career options for scholars in psychology. Some seek employment universities where they teach and conduct research. Others may work in business and industry, while still others may work in private practice. Individuals who are primarily engaged in helping others are called practitioners of psychology. They have to be licensed, have a clinical license, and they provide therapy that is considered evidence-based practice, which is supported by empirical research. 
This clinical psychologist typically has a doctoral degree in psychology, while um, a psychiatrist has a medical degree and specializes more in the abnormal and psychotherapy. So in my experience, your counselors usually are master level, some have PhDs, and they usually provide your talk therapy or behavioral therapy, different types of therapies. Whereas in general, most, but not all, but most psychologists that I've ever known um, either work in some type of field like at companies or um, they may work for insurance companies, things along that line. Whereas you do have clinical psychologists, a lot of times the clinical psychologists focus on testing and providing that service. And then your psychiatrist usually do med management. So you usually see them for a few minutes, tell them how you're doing, whether it's your symptoms are increasing or decreasing, and they adjust the medications. Now there's always exceptions to the rules. But you can see here, um, there's quite a bit that people can do with a degrees in psychology. Of course, they're usually going to be higher than a bachelor's degree. So some other um, specializations are cross-cultural psychology. Cross-cultural psychology focuses on a culture's role in understanding behavior, thought, and emotion. Sports psychology applies psychology's principles to improving sport performance and enjoying participation. Forensic psychology applies psychological concepts to the legal system, and they're often hired by legal teams to provide input and in aspects of trials, such as jury selection, and to testify as experts in trials. Community psychology focuses on accessible care for people with psychological problems. They may work in community-based mental health centers and provide outreach programs to people in need. Environmental psychology is the study of the interaction between people in the physical environment. And school and educational psychology centrally concerns children's learning and adjustment in school. Health psychology emphasizes health psychological factors, lifestyle, and nature of the healthcare delivery system. And clinical and counseling psychology uh, Usually they diagnose and treat people with psychological problems. Clinical psychologists are interested in psychopathology, which is the scientific study of psychological disorders and the treatment of these disorders and the development of diagnostic categories of mental health. You also have industrial and organizational psychology, which focuses on the workplace, both the workers themselves and the organization that employs them. The main area of industrial psychology focus on personnel matters and human resource management, while the main area of organizational psychology focuses on the social influence in the organization. Social psychology deals with people's social interactions, relationships, social perceptions, social cognitions, and attitudes, and researchers are interested in how groups or individuals influence the behavior of others. Physiological psychology focuses on the physical processes that underline mental processes. Behavioral neuroscience focuses on biological processes, specifically how the brain affects behavior. Sensation and perception researchers focus on both the physical symptoms and psychological processes that allow individuals to experience the world. Learning is the complex process by which behavior changes in response to changing circumstances. Cognitive psychology is a broad field that includes examples such as attention, consciousness, information processing, and memory. Researchers in this area are often called experimental psychologists. Developmental psychology studies how individuals change, both as a result of biology and environment from birth through death. Developmental psychologist inquiries range across biological, cognitive, and social domains of life. Motivation focuses on how individuals attain goals, how rewards affect the experience of motivation. Emotion centers on the physiological and brain processes that underline emotional experiences, the emotional expressions of health, and the possibility that emotions are universal. And then the psychology of women and gender. Psychology of women and gender studies, psychological, social, and cultural influences on women's development and the behavioral behavior while also addressing interest of the broader topic of gender and the ways our biological sex influences our ideas of ourself as men and women. Personal, personality psychology focuses on the relatively enduring characteristics of individuals like traits, goals, motives, genetics, personality development, well-being, etc. Think about ways that your mind impacts your body. 
maybe on days that you're worried or upset? Does it impact your body? Do you feel different in your body? What about when you're angry? Anger is a good one to think about because a lot of times when people get angry, their heart rate increases and they feel uh, and it maybe a rush of adrenaline. How about how the body impacts the mind? Think about when you exercise, does that affect your mood? What about chronic pain or a time that you had to deal with pain for a period of time? Did that affect your mood? So there's kind of this back and forth connection. The way that you think and feel impacts the state of your health and your body and the way that you treat your body affects your thinking. So this chapter in review, um, what we're hoping that you will be able to uh, retain from this is to explain that psychology is and what it is uh, and describe it and talk a little bit about the positive psychology movement. Uh, be able to discuss the roots and early scientific foundations of psychology. Summarize the main themes of the seven approaches to psychology. Evaluate the areas of specialization and careers in psychology and describe the connections between the mind and body. I hope this was helpful. Thank you and you have a wonderful day.